Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. Nick here again. Welcome back to the site. We got another interview for you guys today. Carter Hendrickson from University of North Florida. Carter, thank you for joining us on the site today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Glad to hear what you have to say. Been having a great series of interviews this summer, so we're glad that you're joining us here. I want to start off in your high school days here. Now, you had a lot of success back in high school. I know that you helped you lead your team to back-to-back -to -back district titles in 2017 and 2018. You guys also had a state A championship in 2018. And then I know your junior year, you were named the NCSAA Large School Division National Player of the Year. You had 15.3 points and 8.1 rebounds per game. You also shot 52% from the field. So not only were you putting up the stats, you were also doing so efficiently. Now you have success in high school. Once you make the decision to play D1 basketball, is there kind of a change in your mindset to try and make an adjustment to college? Or do you head out to college with that same attitude in high school and just kind of feel out college a bit and just adjust as you were going? Oh, well, going to college, like, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I was confident, like, in my abilities to, to play basketball. I mean, it's, it's basketball. I mean, it's not too complicated, but mm -hmm. you got to go in with the, with the mindset to, like, learn every day and just get better because you can't, you can't go into college, like, thinking that you're just going to, you know, be a beast or whatever mm -hmm. all automatically. Like, you gotta you got to go in there ready to learn and be ready to get better. And, I, and you know, so many guys kind of have to go through that decision process of making, you know, the transition. Where do I want to go play basketball at? How did you kind of settle on University of North Florida to continue your career? Uh, well, kind of a crazy story. Like, well, North Florida was my only Division One offer coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was choosing between Bellarmine, who is, who's now going to be in the ASUN Conference this coming year. But I was choosing between them mm -hmm. and then North Florida. And so how, I, how uh, North Florida came to be, it was like I was playing in the AAU tournament, which I really wasn't going to play in, but mm -hmm. I went down to Orlando, and Coach Driscoll happened to be there, and he just stopped by my game and ended up seeing me, and I didn't play well. He'll tell everybody that I sucked, which is funny, <laughs> but he, uh, he told me that night and offered me, and that, that just led to me eventually committing. And, yeah, it was, it was a you know, difficult decision to leave home mm -hmm. in Kentucky. I mean, it's far, far away from here, but, but yeah, it's the best decision I've made. I'm, very happy that I'm here. Coach Driscoll's awesome. Uh, yeah, and I know you say that Coach Driscoll, Driscoll might have said that you, you sucked in that AAU tournament, but as a freshman, you averaged 17 minutes per game, so clearly he did have some trust in you there. You got involved right away. You played in all 33 games. You had six starts. Now, I want to go back to a game against EAU. It was your first college game in double figures. You scored 13 points. Um, I believe it was just your third game. Um, so what does it feel like to kind of go out there, get double figures for the very first time, and, you know, kind of see that you can perform at the college level in D1 basketball? Uh, well, I mean, it was, it was cool. It was a fun experience. Like, it's always fun, you know, playing well. But, mm -hmm. I mean, we ended up getting the win, which is the most important thing. But, you know, it just, it just is a testament to just all the work I put in and that, you know, it, it's paying off and that I can, you know, I can play at this level with these guys. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pretty you like show – you did show that you could play at that level. You reached double figures six times your freshman year. A uh, game against Stetson, you had your season-high 19 points. And now Stetson, you know, that's obviously conference rival. To score 19 against a team in your conference, I mean, those are the big games right there. Conference play, those are the big games. Those are the games you guys need to win. So when you're going into conference games, do you feel any added pressure and do you prepare any differently in those games as opposed to, you know, games that – aren't on the schedule for those conference games because I know a lot of guys put emphasis on those conference games, but for you, is the preparation different at all or do you kind of have that same prep throughout the entire season? Uh, well, every game's the same for us. Like, we mm -hmm. go into every game with the same mindset. We do the same preparation for every team, no matter who it is. If it's a non-one, if it's a high-major team, like, we treat every game the same because mm -hmm. we're just trying to go one and zero every day. But, but, I mean, people will say that there's, like, a different energy for conference play because, you know, you are playing for, like, seating and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I guess you could just say there is a little bit of a different energy, but there's nothing that, that we do differently in preparation-wise or, you know, how we do things. We just go in there and play our game. Yeah, I mean, you guys always look good out there. You guys have seen a lot of success in your first two years at UNF. And I know in your freshman season you were named the A-Sun Newcomer of the Week once. I mean, how's it feel to have your play recognized by the league in just your freshman season? 
Uh, well, I mean, it was, it was cool. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a pretty up and down freshman year. It really taught mm-hmm. me a lot about like myself and and patience and stuff like that. Because you know, the first you know three quarters of the year, I wasn't really playing a whole lot. Like I started out playing mm-hmm. a decent amount, and then I got to where I was playing like nine minutes a game, and we played so we played at Ju. Mm-hmm. I played nine minutes. And the next game, we had an incident with the player where he got he couldn't play, mm-hmm. and I ended up starting. I played like thirty one minutes plus the of the year. And it was it was just crazy. It was just you know. You just gotta, you know, keep the course and just keep keep working every day because you never know when your opp- opportunity will come. And your opportunity came sophomore season. I mean, you made a huge jump here. Uh, I think we gotta mention this: thirty three games played, you had thirty two starts in your sophomore year. Made a massive jump statistically. You're averaging nearly fifteen points per game, seven rebounds, about two assists. You shot forty three percent from the field and thirty seven percent from three. jump in your field goal percentage, 10% jump in your three-point percentage from freshman year to sophomore year. And what kind of things did you work on during the offseason to make this big of a jump statistically? I mean, obviously, it's a significant jump. Not a lot of guys can do that in a span of one season, especially as a sophomore. So what'd you kind of work on? What'd you kind of do to, you know, get your game refined in shape for your second season at UNF? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I just kind of, like, worked on everything. The main thing my freshman year was that I was just, like, it was just, like, a comfort thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. comfort and confidence. It just was, like, you know, it just wasn't there all the way. I and mean, then going into my sophomore year, like, I had that experience. I played all these teams. Like, I mean, we played Florida. We played all kinds of teams. And so, just, I've been through it. I'm comfortable now. And, like, it was just, I was just able to go out there and just, just be me and play ball. Like, and in, in regard to, like, what I worked on, I just worked on everything to try to get better at what I do, do best. So, like, mm-hmm. shooting. I like, to, I like to go inside out, so work on my post stuff a lot. and Yeah, stuff like that, ball handling, pretty much everything. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned this comfort level. I think that's interesting. You scored 15-plus points in 19 games this year, so obviously there's a high level of consistency this year. Going back to that comfort level thing, I mean, over the course of a season, you have to balance travel, schoolwork, basketball. I'm sure you miss home every now and then because you're playing you know, far away. So how do you kind of stay focused and keep that level of consistency with all these factors kind of contributing to your college basketball experience and all these factors kind of affecting you over the course of a season? Uh, well, for me personally, it's definitely my faith, mm-hmm. like my faith in Jesus and stuff like that. Because I mean, without him, I wouldn't be able to like do anything. He just, you know, he gives me that peace and that confidence. Because you know, really, it's when I go out there and play, I'm I'm playing for an audience of one. Like I'm just playing for God. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's my that's my worship. So I just go out there and try to do the best I can. Like, and then also you know, flip side, just playing for my teammates too. Like we're we're there to win. We're not we're not out there to just you know pity around and you know throw up shots. We're, yeah. we're there to like win. If we show up, we're gonna try and win when we're there. So yeah, yeah I mean definitely comfort comes from my faith. Yeah, I mean you're certainly keeping that level of focus, keeping the head on straight. As I said, you guys went 21 and 12 this past season. So you guys certainly did see a lot of success. And I want to talk about the A-Sun quarterfinal win you guys had against Jacksonville. You scored 21 points. You were tied for leading scorer on the team in that game. That's a huge game. I mean, that was probably the biggest game of your career to date at the time. So how does it feel to go into a big game like that against an in-state rival, especially in Jacksonville? Have such a big game. How did you prepare for that game? How did you execute? Because, I mean, you, you were just a sophomore Still young, you go in. You're one of the bigger guys on your team in that game, and you kind of helped you guys help lead you guys to that win in the quarterfinal against Jacksonville. So, how'd you kind of prepare, get ready for that, and lead your team to victory? Uh, well, I mean, prepared the same. Like our coaches are great mm-hmm. preparing us for games. Like they, their scouting reports are amazing. They're detailed. Like they give us everything we need we need to know in order to be successful. So, just taking that stuff and being able to like keep that in my mind when we're playing and just you know be in the right spots when we're running plays. And it's really just like an, uh, an attribute to my teammates. Like they just, they were able to find me like when I was open and you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, you know, again, like the comfort and confidence, like I was really excited to play. I'm always excited to play, but you know, it's a conference game. You you know, if you lose, you're done. Mm-hmm. So you're just trying to keep winning every game. But, but yeah, it, it wasn't anything different. Just ready to go, ready to play. Yeah, you guys certainly look ready in that game. And I know you had a good year all around. So I always like to end on this. Um, you guys did have a great season last year. I know there was some unfinished business there. Um, you guys did lose a few seniors this past off season. So heading into next year, there'll be a little bit of a new look on the team.
But what are some goals that you have for the future here? Next season, you'll be one of the veteran guys on this team. So what are you kind of hoping to get out of your next two years at UNF? Not only that, but what are you hoping to kind of teach some of these younger guys? Uh, well, it's pretty funny that you said I'm a veteran now. It's kind of weird. I mean, <laughs> I'm guy last years, but it, uh, definitely, I mean, the goal is the same. to win the A-Sun mm -hmm. championship. It doesn't matter who we got on our team. Like, we're going to go out there and try and compete for a championship. Like, I, I think we have seven new guys coming in, six of them are freshmen. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not going to have a drop off year. We're not going to have a down year. Like, we're going to go out there and we're going to, we're going to grind and we're going to work every day to be ready to go because we got, we got some big games to start the season. So, just, for me, helping out these guys and helping them, you know, balance school and travel and basketball and all that stuff. Because it's tough at first, but when mm -hmm. you get used to it, it's pretty smooth sailing from there. But definitely just trying to push everybody and have them push me, too, where we can just get better every day. Yeah, I mean, you guys had a great year last year, something to definitely build off of. You guys have a winning culture over at UNF, so I'm sure those new guys will hopefully be able to adjust to that winning culture. But Carter Hendricks and everyone. Carter, thanks so much for joining us on the site today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Really appreciate it. No problem at all. We'll put Carter's Twitter down below so you guys can follow his career. We'll also put a link to the UNF basketball website so you can follow for news and updates as we always do. Thank you guys for joining us for another interview here on Edge Sports Network. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys again. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you guys later.